Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. For today's video, we are doing one of my absolutely favorite videos to do for every single NBA 2K, and that is putting one player on every single team back in their prime. So before we get going on today's video, I want to let you guys know that I did start a new channel called Crispy Flakes Plays. Um, over on that channel, I will be playing games like Fall Guys and really whatever you know big time game is out i might play some stuff that i just feel like playing too not really sure yet um but yeah man crispy flake plays link to it in the description below go check that out if you guys want to see me play you know some other type of games out there that we all love because you know i love me some nba but also sometimes i like playing some other stuff too man so it would really mean a lot of you guys checked that out uh like i said man link to that in the description and comment section below so yes guys we are putting one player on every single team back in their prime you know see how it's going to affect the landscape of the the league uh, if you guys could have one player back in the prime on your favorite team who would it be me personally obviously I have to decide between you know Derrick Rose who technically never was even really in his prime because he got injured before he really reached it but he was still an MVP so damn that's scared to think about or Blake Griffin I will show you guys a little bit who I got chose you guys can probably guess or maybe you can't man it was Luke Kennard. Yeah, I put Luke Kennard in his prime. No, man. Okay, so the first team we have is the Philadelphia 76ers. Keep in mind, some teams only have either one choice or, like, they didn't really have any choices, so I had to be creative about it. Uh, for the 76ers, I went with Al Horford. Obviously, this is a guy that they gave a good-sized contract to, about $25 million a season, but he started showing his age. If they could just have a younger Al Horford, you know, at that four spot, um, they would have been golden, but it just seems like he's kind of aging up at this point. So, yeah, they got themselves a prime Atlanta Hawks Al Horford. Uh, for the Milwaukee Bucks, I thought the only choice here was Kyle Korver, like having like a three-point sniper, one of the greatest three-point shooters of all time next to Giannis like that. Like he still already gets his shots off, but obviously age is something else that's caught up with him. You know, you obviously got like Brooke Lopez, although prime Brooke Lopez was more like her traditional inside center, which I actually like this new Brooke Lopez alongside Giannis a bit more. Um, George Hill or Sonny Lee Silver, even Marvin Williams would have all been solid choices too, but Kyle Korver to me was the no-brainer. For the Chicago Bulls, uh, they only had one real guy that I could even think of, and that was Thaddeus Young back from the Philadelphia 76er days. Um, he was never like an all-star superstar. Oh, you guys just literally saw, okay, everything. Okay, no, it's fine. Um, but no, so for Thaddeus Young here, guys, it's like, he was there was once upon a time where he was just a really good like athletic wing player you know it was mainly on the 76ers uh pretty good defender could knock down the three-point shot he shot a lot of corner threes and stuff man um went to the chicago bulls and just was not that anymore so yeah we have him in his prime for the cleveland cavaliers you gotta go with kevin love i actually like look at this team with a prime kevin love i'm like damn that could make some noise can you imagine trying to get a rebound it just would not happen. Like, even to this day, it's still going to be hard to get rebounds because Kevin Love's still a good rebounder. But T-Wolf Kevin Love was a different problem. You combined it with, like, you know, Colin Sexton and... Yeah, okay. Uh, for the Boston Celtics, I went with a Utah Jazz all-star, Gordon Hayward. It was really the only choice I could think of on here. Now, obviously, he still has all-star moments. The thing, big thing with Gordon these days, though, is that you just don't know if he's going to stay healthy. Uh, you know, if it was just, if, if he was a little bit younger, a little bit less injury prone, um, he would have been absolutely perfect with the Celtics team. He still does to some extent, but, you know, just, you just wish you didn't have, like, that injury bug on the back of your mind as a Celtics fan, right? Uh, for the Clippers, I went with Joakim Noah. He is on the roster. Um, I don't even know if he played at all, but he is on the roster, so technically you can use him, right, man? So I'm just like imagining, like, okay, can you can you imagine Joe Keen starts the game at center, and then Montrez Harrell is the other guy you gotta deal with off the bench? Like your centers would need to be at they would need to have like literal eight packs to from like a fatigue standpoint, a stamina standpoint, to like keep up with these guys. Like that's just so much hustle and energy. Um, I don't know if the NBA could actually handle it. It would be a lot of fun to watch. I'm very curious to see how this team does in the rebuild. I was thinking maybe, or not rebuild, but simulation. I was thinking of doing Paul George, just like, but he's still 91 overall, and, and 2K doesn't really account for like choking in the finals or the playoffs, I should say. So yeah, that was that would be kind of a waste. Uh, for the Grizzlies, they literally had like no young players in their prime that I could have picked, or older players, I should say. So the guy I had to go with, uh, I had to go with Anthony Tolliver. He was the only one. I went with a younger Anthony Tolliver. Once upon a time, man, he was a pretty solid player. He still, like, has moments. But, uh, yeah, as you guys can see, there was nobody else to go with. So, yeah, I had to go with him. And he was, like, a 71. He's now a 77 overall. There you go, Grizzlies. Uh, for the Hawks, uh, I decided to go with Jeff Teague, who's really the only choice in this case. Uh, just because, you know, Teague is just a good veteran point guard. Obviously, um, his best days was when he played for the Atlanta Hawks, so obviously he'll know the system, but that's kind of what the Hawks need to Trey Young needs. It's just like good veterans that, you know, provide stability to the roster. He'll still be a backup point guard for this video, um, but even, you can even run like a Jeff Teague, Trey Young backcourt at times. 
For the Miami Heat, I had to go with Andre Iguodala. So Iguodala was, of course, acquired from Memphis Grizzlies. And uh, he's another guy that you just kind of see his age now. Like every now and then he does have like that fountain of youth moment where he does make a big time play for the Heat. But for the most part, it's like he's 35. Um, this is the Iguodala from the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, you know, for all you old heads out there like myself that remember watching him play like Allen Iverson. Yeah, this guy's athleticism was literally off the charts. Um, he might have had like his best season like on the Denver Nuggets. It was for like one year. But uh, yeah, we're going with the 76ers version. For the Charlotte Hornets, Nicholas Batum from the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, once upon a time, this man was a walking bucket, guys. Like, he was actually pretty damn solid, and then he got paid, and he stopped being good at basketball. So, yeah, you guys get what you paid for, but in this case, it's a simulation, and in real life, you did not get what you paid for. Um, you got a bitch-ass contract, sorry to say. Uh, for the Utah Jazz, it's got to be Mike Conley. You know, Mike Conley, of course, is one of those point guards that was always, like, a top point guard in the NBA, but never, like, the top, or never even, like, classified as just, like, I don't know, man. Like, like, everybody respected Mike Conley. Like, you knew what you were going to get. You were going to get a really good, solid, stable point guard for your franchise. And uh, for the Jazz, um, it just did not really go as planned. Like, he was fine at times. But, you know, you could tell he definitely, just like being in a new system, a new team and stuff. He spent his entire career with the Grizzlies. So, yeah, it definitely made a big difference. Uh, for the Sacramento Kings, I actually went with Jabari Parker. So, Jabari Parker, back when he was in the Milwaukee Bucks, um, it was around this age, I think, or I don't remember what his age was exactly. Um, there was like a season where he was looking really good, man, averaging like 20 points per game. I don't know if I can actually see it or not. It was something like that. So, yeah, 20 points per game this season. Uh, had a bad injury. I think he's torn his ACL like twice and just not the same player. Like, honestly speaking, the way he played, it was kind of like a young Carmelo Anthony, man. Just with, like the post moves and mid-range shots and stuff. Obviously not a good three-point shooter like Melo was, but uh, yeah, you could definitely see some similarities though. Which I don't really know how that would work today, but yeah, probably not great. Okay, um, screwed it up. Good job, Crispy. Okay, uh, for the New York Knicks, the only player I can really think of was Dennis Smith Jr. Going back to his rookie season on the Dallas Mavericks. He was around like an 18-point per game score. Okay, 15-point per game score. Um, well, at this time, I remember he was getting comparisons to like a young Russell Westbrook. Like he was getting those comparisons. Um, then obviously got traded for Porzingis. Then had some mental things going on and uh, has not been the same player. Hopefully he can return to form. But yeah, once upon a time, he was a really solid player, guys, for the uh, Mavericks, you know, not too long ago. For the Lakers, decided to go with Dwight Howard. So it was between Dwight Howard and Rajon Rondo. Um, and, you know, so I had to think out of the two, like, which one was better. I mean, obviously Dwight Howard, like, he's, like, a top center of all time. He's one of the tops. Like, you can't deny that. Uh, him and Anthony Davis, like, Dwight in his prime, good luck. Like, this, this, there, was, I'm going to be surprised if another team wins the championship. I'm going to root for another team just because, like, the Lakers, it's like, it's like, it's so clearly that they are the top team on here. But we'll see, man, we'll see. Uh, for the Orlando Magic, I went with a rookie, Michael Carter-Williams. If you guys remember this guy, I believe one rookie of the year. Look at those stats. Like, he was an absolute beast. And, yeah, then he was on field again next season. I ended up getting traded to Milwaukee Bucks, which was kind of weird at the time. Uh, and ever since his regress, had a pretty good comeback season for the Orlando Magic. But, yeah, we got him on the Magic in his prime now. Um, for, I literally keep on pushing the wrong button every single time, man. Okay, for the... Dallas Mavericks, there was not really a lot of choices, uh, so I decided to go with a younger injury, you know, injury-free Kristaps Porzingis. It was the only choice I could really think of here, man, so I guess I could have gone with, like, maybe, like, a Courtney Lee or something like that, but even him would have been, like, a 77 overall, so yeah, I went with a healthy, a uh, little bit younger Kristaps Porzingis. For the Brooklyn Nets, I went with DeAndre Jordan, so this would actually work out perfect, man. Um, I mean, DeAndre Jordan, like, you know, he's obviously losing athleticism and stuff like that, but this would allow them to trade, like, Jared Allen and maybe, like, Dinwiddie for, like, another, like, option on the team. But, yeah, just a good, serviceable, rebounding, intimidating center out there. Uh, for the Denver Nuggets, we went with Paul Millsap. So, Paul Millsap, in my honest opinion, to this day is still, like, the perfect type of power forward you want alongside Jokic. It's just that he's an old head now, man. Like, he's too old. So he's just... He's outside of the window. He'll probably be gone after this season. But, uh, yeah, him and his prime, you know, all-star days from the Atlanta Hawks uh, would have been perfect, guys. Absolutely perfect. Now, he's had some good seasons for the Nuggets since. But, yeah, just outside of that window. Just by a little bit, unfortunately speaking. For the Pacers, a completely healthy Victor Oladipo. Um, I still think he can return to this next season, assuming that he stays around on the team. I have no idea what's going to happen with the Pacers roster, if I'm being 100% honest. But, uh, yeah, had to go with him. There wasn't really any other options. For the Pelicans, a prime J.J. Redick man. Uh, you know, going back to those Clipper days, Orlando Magic days, running off screens. It, he's still really good. He still has really big games, but, you know, he's just getting kind of older. But, uh, yeah, it would have been great if he was, like, right in his prime, right as this Pelicans team started getting really good, right? Uh, for the Pistons, had to go with prime Derrick Rose, guys. Love Blake Griffin, but I thought about it this way. 
Could a prime Blake Griffin carry the Pistons in a simulation? Probably not. Could a prime Derrick Rose? I like my chances. Like, this is actually a really solid team around a prime Derrick Rose. So, uh, I don't know why they can't use his younger self picture. I guess it's too tough for 2K to do. Uh, but yeah, 96 overall. Was he 25 in his prime? I don't think that's correct. Because his best season was when he won the MVP. But that was, he was like 22. So, good job, 2K. Okay, for the Raptors, I went with a prime Marcus Gasol, you know, a former defensive player of the year. 93 overall. It's crazy how good this man was. Like, we kind of forget about that. But yeah, Marcus Gasol, 93 overall, and this 2K is pretty damn impressive. Like, you compare that to an all-star starter in Siakam, 88 overall. So, yeah, Marcus Gasol, 93 overall, defensive beast. And, of course, knocked down threes. Although, I don't really think he was shooting threes at that time. Because it wasn't really, like, normal for centers to really shoot threes like that. Uh, for the Rockets, I went with an MVP, Russell Westbrook, 95 overall. He's down to like an 88 overall these days. Uh, now, keep in mind, I still think Russell could be that 95 overall player. It's just that, you know, he's no longer the only, like, go-to guy on a team. There's James Harden. So, obviously, a guy whose numbers are really based off of, of rebounds and assists also are going to go down when you have another guy that plays just like that. Uh, for the San Antonio Spurs, was it, like, a lot of options? I went with LaMarcus Aldridge. He's like an 84 overall now, but this is from the Portland Trailblazer days. I could have went like Rudy Gay. I mean, but that would have been like maybe like an 83, 84 overall player at best. Um, but yeah, there was not really a lot of options. So I thought like good young Marcus Aldridge for this team to build around was a good choice. And then for the Suns, we have a young Ricky Tricky Rubio. Yeah, this man um, on the Minnesota Timberwolves, this was like before he had, because he had like, he's had like two or three torn ACLs himself. Um... But, I mean, like, his playmaking, man, this guy was fun to watch. Guys, I remember when he was, like, on Spain, it's like a 17-year-old. Uh, just the way he would pass and stuff, it was, like, mesmerizing. For the OKC Thunder, I went with a prime young CP3. Uh, I feel bad, man, because, like, Chris Paul, the only reason he's talking about being traded is because of his age. But can you imagine, like, what we would be saying about this team right now if CP3 was in his Pelican days, you know, playing with Shea? We would be talking about that being, like, the top future best backcourt in the NBA. We would really be talking about them. And 97 overall, love CP3 to see what he does in the simulation. Uh, for the Timberwolves, was not a lot of options. I went with an all-star version of D'Lo. He's, like, an 84 overall this season. So I put him to an 88, which was from his all-star year. That's all I could really think of, guys. Sorry to say. Uh, for the Trailblazers, prime Carmelo Anthony. So you guys let me know. Do you think Melo was more in his prime on the Knicks or the Nuggets? I went the Nuggets version, but, you know, both, I think, had pros and cons. Uh, but, yeah, 95 overall. This team, I, this is actually the team I want to watch the most in the simulation. I want to see how Melo plays with Damian Lillard in this case. Uh, for the Warriors, I went with a prime Draymond Green out of the big three. I do think he's going to be, like, the first one to really regress just because his game is based off, like, athleticism and stuff. But also, it's really reliant on other players. Uh, but Steph Green and Clay Thompson, they're going to be shooting threes until they're in their 40s. Like, that jump shot the shot's never going to go away. Um, and then for the Wizards, had to be a prime John Wall. Hopefully, he can return to form like that. Really excited, man. I really just hope he has, like, a comeback player of the year type of season. We'll see about that, man. But, yeah, for the simulation, we are going to be following the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, let me know in the comment section below, which team do you think is going to win it all? My prediction is the Lakers. I just feel like that Lakers team with Dwight Howard... There will be no scoring on them, man. But we'll see how that goes. Going to go ahead and simulate this NBA season. Also, if you did skip ahead to skip the beginning of the video, man, just another quick reminder. Check out my, sec or my I guess my third channel, technically. Uh, Crispy Flakes plays for, you know, new games over there and stuff. So, hope to see you guys there. But let's simulate this season. Okay, so a record of 43-38 and 38 for the Portland Trailblazers. Not going to lie, that's pretty damn horrible considering you have a prime criminal Anthony with Damian Lillard. Uh, one more game against the LA Clippers who are 53-20 and 20 with Joakim Noah. Uh, some late through date and finished with a L on the season. We got LeBron James as MVP, so it don't matter, man. It don't matter, you know. You can add Prime Dwight. You can add Prime Carmelo. I have a bad memory, guys. Whoever else we added. It don't matter. LeBron James MVP, although he doesn't. Dylan Winder, rookie of the year, of course. Uh, we got Dennis Schroeder as six man. Giannis, defensive player. Christian Wood, most improved. Yes, sir. And Frank Vogel as coach of the year, 69 and 13 for that Lakers team. Very scary. Uh, LNBA first CP3 and Russell Westbrook, their new forms. I guess it feels kind of weird to say. Uh, made it. Uh, all NBA second with Kevin Love. Porzingis, Marcus Saul, okay. And All NBA third. Um, no of the uh, younger players on there. And then we got the All Defense team CP3. Uh, that's it. What about Dwight Howard? There, there we go, man. Dwight Howard and Andre Iguodala and Russell Westbrook, of course. And of course, we got the rookies that are broken in this game. Uh, but yeah, so these are what the seedings are looking like. We got Lakers, Portland, Pelicans, Golden State, Denver, Dallas, 
uh, Clippers, Minnesota, Brooklyn, Orlando, Boston, Miami, uh, Milwaukee, Cleveland, Toronto, and Philly. D Rose could not lead my team, guys. Could not lead my team. Let's go with these. Uh, yeah, real quick, we'll go to the, to the uh, league standings so we can actually see all the records. So, yeah, who was, who was the worst? The Kings with Jabari Parker. That's fine. I'm not mad about that. Uh, the Houston Rockets, 33 and 49 with a prime Russell Westbrook? Okay. I mean, I guess that goes to show that, like, Russell, now that he's on the Rockets, has, like, learned to share, which I feel like I'm talking about a three-year-old. But you know what I mean, man? It's like he's a different player now than he was back then. Uh, Brooklyn first seed. Yeah, they do have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving with DeAndre Jordan. So that definitely makes sense. And my Pistons, 30 and 52. Knicks were the worst with Dennis Smith Jr. Okay, that's fine. Uh, player stats on the season. So I'm just going to kind of scroll through it like this. If you guys do want to see, just so you know, we gotta, don't got to stop on every single team again. But for the most part, you should be able to see, you know, all the players. Um, not here, of course. But uh, Kevin Love, 20 and 11. Good for him, man. Goran Hayward, second lean score. Okay, where's he at? Joakim Noah, 9, 12, 3 assists, 2 blocks. That sounds like Joakim Noah numbers. Let's see how the man did. Anthony Tolliver, 8 points, 5 rebounds. That's not bad. Like, that's not bad to get on your team. Some teams get Derrick Rose and some teams get, you know, Anthony Tolliver. It's just... So the way it is, man, uh, Nicholas Matum for uh, leading score. Mike Conley, third leading score. Okay, Jabari Parker, 14 points. Pretty much what he does right now. So not all that impressive. Dwight Howard, 17, 10, and two blocks. That's probably actually pretty accurate because we got to keep in mind that this is a new era of basketball. Like back when Dwight was in his prime, um, you know, just like the way the center, the, the, the center was kind of going to more back then. So, yeah, playing a team like that, he probably wouldn't average more than 20 points at least, uh, you know, for the team out there. But or maybe he would, man. Prime Derrick Rose, 25 points, 4 rebounds, 7 assists with Blake Griffin. How does he not make the playoffs? Like, that's a good, solid team. How do they not make the playoffs, man? Uh, Marcus Saul leading score. We got the Houston Rockets. Russell Westbrook at 25, 11, and 9. Okay, yes. Still didn't make the playoffs, though, which is just weird to think about. But it is what it is. Ricky Rubio, 12 and 12. Okay. Uh, CP3 in his prime, 27 and 12. Yes, sir. D-Low leading score. Love to see it. And we got Carmelo at 21 points. Six rebounds and four assists. We got three guys averaging 20 um, as the eight seeds. So, yeah, I'm still predicting probably the Lakers are going to win this. Let's go ahead. Simulate round. See uh, who gets eliminated first. See, you know, how the 2K simulation is to these teams. The Magic are gone with Michael Carter-Williams. Uh, the Heat are gone with Iguodala. No respect to them. Uh, 76ers, the Al Horford are gone. Okay, okay. Cleveland Cavaliers with Caleb are gone. Denver is gone. Wow, you, you can tell, like, which teams uh, 2K just does not respect, man. So we got Lakers, Golden State. I would sign up for that series so quick to watch, man. Clippers, Dallas, Brooklyn, Boston, Toronto, and Milwaukee. Simulate round again. Moving on. Oh, Golden State might get the Lakers, man. I mean, you know, the, the, the shooting against the big guys, I guess it would make sense. The Nets are gone. Okay, we got the Boston Celtics. Toronto Raptors eliminated. Um, Clippers gone. Okay, okay. And the Warriors. Okay, the Lakers came back and won that series, man. So we got the Lakers. That was kind of surprising, considering that all I added was a younger Chris Thomas Porzingis, who was around the same weight, uh, rating. And then we got Kyle Korver and Gordon Hayward, which goes to show you how, just how important Gordon Hayward is to this team, right? Like, he is extremely important. Uh, and just how much better they would be if he never got injured, right? Like, ever. Okay, so moving on, we got the Boston Celtics. And, wow, Chris Thomas Porzingis from the Knicks days. Maybe y'all shouldn't have traded the man away in New York. Uh... Man, he would have been perfect with RJ and Mitchell Robinson. Oh, well, man. Okay, here we go. Simulate round. Who's going to win it? My prediction was off. It is going to be the... The Boston Celtics with prime Gordon Hayward. Finals MVP is... There we go. Respectfully saying, man. 26 points. Six rebounds. Eight assists. Not going to lie. I was not expecting him to be that good. Like, I was like, okay, he'll be a good part of the team. But, uh, yeah, he pretty much was the team in this case, man. So, hope you guys did all enjoy this video. Uh, be sure to drop that like, subscribe. If you're new to my channel, check out my third channel, guys, which is Crispy Flakes Plays. And peace out.